welcome to Elevate. This is my translator. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we are playing the game Watch Your Mouth. Watch your mouth. He also realizes. Realize. <laughs> He's not the best translator sometimes. So see if you know what I'm trying to say. This is the viral version. The what version? Bible version. <laughs> Bible version. Yeah, you're not supposed to look. Okay. Drive comes to tour a hall. The powers that be. The powers that to be. The powers. The powers that be. The powers that be. Huh? How the mighty have fallen. How the mighty have fallen. For her and her. Fruit. 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 Fly in the earth, right? Fly. 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 Line leading the blind. Line leading the blind. Drop in a rocket. Drop in a bucket. Catches a fire. Catches a fire. Oh. A fire. He had a little peek. So this is a really fun game. What am I saying? This is a really fun game. If you want something to do at home. If you want something to do at home. <laughs> and yeah, it's really fun, so you should get it. It's really fun, you should get it. <laughs> so now we are going to go to worship. Worship. So go to our show.
All right, guys, I hope that you were able to enjoy your, the time of worship and really just reflect on how good our God is. Now we're going to go into our time of message where we're going to hear a really powerful and impactful message from Evan, the youth pastor at our Boyce Road campus. So please uh, make sure that you're paying attention and sharing with what you're learning in the comment section as well. So let's see what Evan has to say. for joining us for yet another week of Elevate Online. I can't believe that we are just one week away from our last Elevate before summer break. I know that this uh, semester hasn't gone exactly how we all thought it would. Things have been a little bit different, uh, but honestly, I believe it's been one of the best ones yet. And I want to thank you guys for, for sticking with us through the ups and the downs as we've tried to figure things out and navigate doing Elevate in this new digital format. Now, before I jump into the message for tonight, I do have one confession I want to share with you guys, and that's this. That during this quarantine, during this time alone, uh, I've fallen into a bit of a black hole when it comes to social media. Now, I thought I had an addiction before all of this began, but since the quarantine, since uh, not being able to go anywhere or see anybody, it has gotten out of control. And something that I have noticed or picked up on throughout my hours and hours and hours of scrolling is that right now in our culture, there is this uh, big sense of nostalgia. Now, if you don't know what nostalgia is, it's when you, you look back to the past. Right? You think about uh, how things used to be, and you, you think about how great they were, and you're just longing for some things in the past to just come back. You wish things could go back to how they were in the good old days, right? And uh, right now, you know, there's a lot of that going around, particularly for the 90s and for the early 2000s. I mean, everywhere I look, on social media, I'm constantly seeing posts about uh, how great things were back then. And, and people are posting, you know, pictures of products and music and, and TV shows from those good old days. And I gotta admit that, you know, I've jumped on the bandwagon a time or two with that as well, because, you know, why not? And there's a lot of things from my childhood, from, from back in those good old days that, that I really miss. And it would be awesome to see them brought back. But when you get too focused on the past, it can start to lead to trouble. I want you guys to take a minute here and think back to the last time that you tried to walk backwards. And don't, don't sit there and pretend like you've never done it before because we all have. But just take a second here and think back to that experience. Think about what it was like. Was it easy or, or was it hard? Think about how far you got or you didn't get. Whether or not you ran in to anything. You see, no matter how good we might think we are, none of us can walk backwards for more than probably a, a few minutes at best. And why is that? Well, it's kind of obvious. It's because we can't see where we're going. And life is a lot like that, I think. You know, when we focus on the past, then we are distracted from the future. If we live our lives in a constant state of nostalgia, then we'll never be able to move forward. If all we think about are the good old days, then we'll never be able to see the great days that lie ahead of us. 
Now, don't get me wrong. We can learn a lot from looking back to the past, and it can be fun to reminisce. But just like walking backwards, we can't do it all the time. It's not a sustainable way to live. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, it says this, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now these verses, they were originally a message for the Israelites, but I believe it is still a powerful reminder to us to not get caught up in the past and to focus on what is right in front of us. Just like we talked about a few weeks ago, God is still speaking, God is still working, and He is still good. Right now, God is doing something new in your life. He is making a way for you in whatever wilderness you might be facing, whatever challenges might be coming your way. God is making a way for you right now. So don't worry about what is behind you. Instead, rejoice in the things that are ahead. Guys, tonight, I want to talk about the future. I want to talk about your future, my future, the, the future of the world, and the things that you and I can do to make sure that God is a part of it. Now, believe it or not, uh, right now, this time that you are spending in school and in Elevate, before you know it, these are going to be your good old days. Right? In just a few years, these are going to be the times that you look back on when you start to feel nostalgic. And so I, I hope that you're making the most of them. Right? I hope that you are having fun and making awesome memories and coming to Elevate. You're, you're growing and you're learning and you're strengthening your relationship with God. But I also hope you're taking some time to think about the future. I hope that you're thinking about next year and, and five years from now and heck, even 20 years from now. I hope that you're thinking about life after Elevate. And I'm not just talking about things like where you want to go to college or what kind of job you want to have or, or how big of a house you want to live in. I'm talking about the kind of person you want to be. I'm talking about how much joy and comfort and peace you want in your life. You know, when we think about the future, it's pretty easy for us to focus on things like jobs and money and success, but how much time do we actually spend thinking about the things that really matter? Listen to what it says in James chapter 4, verses 13 through 15. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, Spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Guys, this life that you and I are living, it's temporary. And while it's important to have plans for the future, for what we want to accomplish while we're here, none of it really means anything if we put all of that before God. We can plan all we want. We can work hard. We can prepare. But we really don't know what tomorrow will bring. You see, our lives, they can change in an instant. And just like that, all of the, the best laid plans can be ruined. I mean, just look at what's happening in the world right now. 
This isn't how any of us planned on spending the spring of 2020. And I'm sure a lot of you had plans that were ruined by the coronavirus. But God is everlasting. No matter what happens, God is always there. And his plans for you and for your life, they are stronger than anything that we can come up with on our own. And so when you think of the future, I challenge you uh, not to think about what you can accomplish, but instead to think about what God will accomplish through you. Guys, right now, you know, even though it, it might not always feel like it or seem like it, living a good, a strong Christian life, it's pretty easy. And I say that because you have the amazing opportunity to be a part of an incredible community of believers. Crossroads is a special church. And Elevate is unlike any student ministry I have ever seen before. And when you are in an environment like this, the love and the joy of Jesus, it is infectious. Right? Everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, you see the love of Jesus in the people around you. And it's pretty hard to try and ignore that. But what I can tell you from my own personal experience is that that's not always going to be the case. As each of you move closer and closer to graduating, now you're also moving closer and closer to a life away from this community. Some of you will, will go off to college or a trade school and others will uh, join the military or enter the workforce, but uh, no matter where life takes you, guys, it can be a scary place. It can be lonely and this bubble of, of church and elevate and friends, you know, it, it won't always be around to hold you accountable. You're going to have to make some tough choices. And the choices that you make, man, they might very well impact the entire trajectory of your life. They could change everything. Choices like the kind of people you hang out with. Or how you spend your free time. And so guys, I ask you, please, don't make these choices alone. If you remember one thing that you learned during your time in Elevate, let it be this, that you are not alone. God loves you, and he is always there. So please let him help you when you have to make these hard choices, these hard decisions, right? Just like it says in James chapter 4, make your decisions based on the plans that he has for you. Instead of on what you think you want or, or you need. Because if you do that, even when things get hard, even when things in life uh, don't go your way, you will still be able to stand on solid ground. And guys, as you prepare for life after Elevate, I want to leave you with just a couple of tips, just a few things to take with you. And the first is this, to make God part of your daily routine. Now, this shouldn't be uh, anything new, right? This is kind of Elevate 101. You should be a pros at this by now. But whatever it looks like, whether it's prayer or worship or scripture or serving others, connect with God on a daily basis. All right, this might seem uh, silly or cliche, but I promise you that it makes all the difference in the world. When life gets crazy, you will always have someone to turn to in God. And the next thing that you should do when uh, you move on from Elevate, whether that's this coming fall or whether that's five years from now, is to find a faith community. 
You guys know from experience, right, how awesome it is when you're a part of a community of believers. The friendship and the acceptance that, that come with it, they're unlike anything you can imagine. And if you're moving away after high school, find a church to be a part of. If you're going to college, I encourage you to look for a campus ministry that you can join and engage with. You know, when I was in school at IUP, I was part of the Campus Crusade for Christ, or CREW. And guys, being a part of that group, it made my, my short amount of time there so much easier and a lot more fun, to be honest. And if you're unsure, if you're nervous about where to start or how to find one of these communities... Talk to one of us youth pastors. We would love to help you find something. Now lastly, pursue joy. I'm not talking about the, the cheap thrills that come from partying or money or relationships. I'm talking about the pure joy that comes when you live in communion with Jesus. The joy that only a relationship with your Savior can bring. Now, many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't, so long as you continue to put God first in your life, I promise you'll find out. Now for those of you who you know, aren't graduating for a few more years, the ones who have been sitting there through this whole thing thinking to yourselves that none of this applies to you. Keep these tips in your back pocket. And because it's never too early to start thinking about the future. And while you continue to make memories and learn during your time here at Elevate, I hope that you'll trust God's plan for you. This, this is the advice that I wish I would have been given when I was your age. I mean, when I graduated and when I moved on uh, from my youth group, I started making all kinds of choices without including God, without putting Him first. And so it was extremely lucky when God finally pushed me in and ended up leading me here to crossroads. He brought me a sense of, of community and love right when I needed it most. Many of you have probably heard by now that I'm also getting ready for, for life after Elevate. And for the past few years, I have been uh, trying to finish my degree while also working here at the church, and it's never been easy trying to, to balance the two. And so after praying about it a lot and really listening for what God had to say, I've decided to resign from my job at Crossroads so that I can give 100% to finishing school, so that I can be all in to finishing my degree and continuing to do ministry to the highest level possible. Now, this was easily the most difficult decision that I've ever, ever had to make in my entire life. Because I, I love each and every one of you so, so much. And I have been beyond blessed to have gotten to spend the past four years with you. And I want you to know that no matter uh, where life takes me, Elevate will always have a special place in my heart. And no matter what happens, if any of you ever need anything, you can always reach out to me because I will always be there for you. You know, I don't know exactly what the future holds for me. And I don't know what the future holds for you, but you know, when I start to get nervous or anxious or worried, I lean on these words. And I hope that you'll do the same. This is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, 
what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you tonight and we are so grateful. I am so grateful for Elevate, for Crossroads, and for the ministry that you are doing here. God, thank you for each and every one of the students of Elevate, both who the ones who are tuning in to the service tonight and the ones who are not. God, I thank you for uh, the amazing ways that you have been working in their lives. God, the ways you have shaped them and the, the ways you have brought them into being who they are today. I'm so grateful for the time I've had to get to know each and every one of them and every student who's walked through the doors of Crossroads over the past four years. God, I'm so grateful for you uh, putting me here, giving me the opportunity to connect with them and to uh, build relationships with this amazing body of students. God, we know that the future can be a scary place. It can be full of unknowns and tough choices and, and roads with different ways to turn down. And God, sometimes we don't know which way to go. And so I pray for each and every one of the students that are a part of Elevate, God, that when they reach those points in life, when they need to make those tough choices, God, when, when things are unclear, that you will be there to guide them. God, that you will remind them that they are loved by you and they don't need to worry because they can just give it all to you and you will take care of everything. God, I pray that you just continue to bless uh, each and every one of the students here at Elevate. You continue to bless this ministry and allow it to be fruitful. Uh, and for those who are pouring into it, both the staff and the volunteers, all the leaders that, that make this ministry possible, God, that you will just allow them to give everything they can to these kids because they deserve the very best. God, we love you and we praise you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God Groups. So go to small groups. Go to small groups. Go to small groups. Go to small groups. Go, 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 go to small groups. Go, 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 go to small groups. Go to small groups. Have a great week. Ew. Mm. The spit. They clobber.